So SpaceX has scheduled a road closure on Monday, April 19 for Starship SN15 first static fire attempt. The installation of three Raptors could begin at any point over the next three days and generally takes a matter of hours. CEO Elon Musk says that SpaceX is aiming to launch its fifth high-altitude Starship test flight as early as next week, continuing a more or less monthly cadence. And learning from the unique failures of Starship prototypes SN8, SN9, SN10 and SN11. SpaceX's next test flight arguably has the best chance of success, thanks to the introduction of hundreds of improvements on Starship SN15, many of which will hopefully address the shortcomings that ultimately destroyed all four of its predecessors. As of April 17, SpaceX has scheduled a road closures on 19 April in Boca Chica, Texas, to attempt a static fire test. Earlier this week Starship SN15 completed cryogenic proof and thrust puck stress tests on Monday. Standing up to the thermal stresses of the simulated cryogenic propellant, the tank pressures required for flight, greater than 6 bar or 90 psi, and the thrust of three Raptor engines. On Wednesday, SpaceX removed a steel structure fitted with hydraulic rams used to simulate Raptor thrust and performed a similar cryogenic proof test later that evening, instead of testing SN-15's main tanks, though the second round focused on Starship secondary header tanks meant to store propellant specifically for landing. The results of both tests are unclear but the removal of the ram structure does suggest that the main cryo proof was successful enough that it doesn't need to be repeated with those tests, seemingly out of the way Starship SN-15 has just few major hurdles standing between it and a launch attempt next week, notably because it was the prototype since SN-8 to incorporate hydraulic ramp thrust puck testing into its cryo proof. SN-15 didn't roll to the launch pad with Raptor engines already installed, assuming SpaceX wants to continue testing as soon as possible. The company now has around three and a half days to install three Raptor engines that should be no problem, though Musk has said that SN-15 will be the first Starship prototype to fly with upgraded Raptor engines depending on how significant those upgrades are. SN-15's Raptor installation process could be longer than usual as engine technicians and engineers install them on a Starship prototype for the first time. Starship SN-15 will likely be able to attempt a static fire test on Monday, April 19. Historically SpaceX has never flown a Starship less than six days after a three-engine static fire, meaning that a successful Monday test is far from a guarantee that Starship SN-15 SpaceX or the FAA will be ready for a launch attempt next week. Still Starship SN-11 did fly four days after a static fire test and, SN9 attempted to launch three days after engine test, so it's far from impossible. In previous video we talked about Super Heavy BN2, the developments of the BN1 booster, and we have seen how the prototype of the Super Heavy first stage of 70 meters in height, that in maximum configuration can mount as many as 28 Raptor engines had begun to take shape. The structure had finally been stacked, and in the same days Elon Musk had anticipated, that the first Starship and Super Heavy orbital test could take place as early as July of this year, but there have been further developments, because apparently the BN-1 prototype was only a constructive test not intended for its actual use, basically a simple assembly test. Next prototype BN-2 is developing with the intention of carrying out the preliminary flight tests as soon as possible. There is even talk of being able to bring a trial version to the launch pad by the end of April. Probably this first version could mount up to eight Raptor engines. And finally we come to the big news, the first launch tower that is quickly taking shape in Boca Chica, it is one of two structures of this type originally planned by SpaceX, and one day it will have amazing task of capturing the super heavy booster during the landing phase, perhaps one of the most extravagant plans unveiled long ago by SpaceX, which no one believed, until construction of this structure actually began. The launch tower began to take shape during March starting with the sturdy basin pillars that dropped 30 meters deep into the ground subsequently, the area was cemented and these days, it has started to take shape vertically, its initial purpose will be to provide a sturdy base for this Starship spacecraft to be stacked on top of the super heavy first stage before launch, the precise height is not known, 
but it could reach at least 150 meters if we consider that Elon Musk had indicated 140 meters of height between the crane hook and the ground, in addition to this general information and the intention to use it sooner or later for the recovery of the first stage and perhaps also of Starship, at the moment we don't know anything else, but it is clear that the intention to carry out an orbital test in the coming months has been taken very seriously, given the speed with which construction work is progressing, at this rate the tower will almost certainly be ready by July, I just hope BN2 and Starship SN20 will be to assembled together for the test flight. SN20's appearance will be significantly different from previous prototypes, as the heat shield plates will cover its entire surface. Beyond that Starship SN20 will certainly be equipped for super heavy release operations and will include many other enhancements that SpaceX has not yet shared. So if you're excited about the groundbreaking work of SpaceX and wants to be updated with its latest news, hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Till then keep watching.